All right, guys, welcome back to another video. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the uh, LS7366R 32-bit quadrature counter with serial interface. Now, this right here is a great device for if you're wanting to count rotary encoders with a high cycle per revolution. This one, for example, has 500 cycles per revolution. And I got this board from, let's see, what's the name of the website? Nope. Super Droid Robotics. Yeah, no, superdroidrobots.com. And uh, this is the uh, chip. It's 2865, but when I bought it, it was close to $40 because shipping, of course. But there's pretty good documentation about it and uh, Arduino libraries and sample code, which is great and it works great. But I was wondering, well, how do I get it to work with Raspberry Pi? Because that's what I need to use it for, for my project. Well, I found this library on GitHub by, what's his name? Federico, oh, yeah, Federico. Federico, okay. <laughs> and he made this and it works pretty well, but this right here was made for Python 2.7, so I changed it up a bit and made it for Python 3 and above, so it works. And I had to do a little bit of changing to make it work with my rotary encoder, because my rotary encoder only has a single channel output, whereas some others might have two outputs, like an A and a B channel. But because mine only has one channel, I had to change it up this line of code right here. Because when you get it, or when you get this code, the default code is actually 0, 03. And if you go look at the documentation for the chip, go right here, nope, go back up. There we go. As you can see right here, for 0, 3, which is, this right here is in binary, and then if you didn't know, this right here is in hex for people who didn't know. Uh, this is for the X4 quadrature count mode, or four counts per quadrature cycle. Well, because I only have a single output, I need non-quadrature count mode. So that's why I have made it, so mine is 0, 0. So, you may need to change this line depending on what your encoder is like, or what the output is. And if you see right here, there is only three outputs right here, and I have that wired up over here onto the board. Let me get the light over here so you guys can see. Yeah, so you can see, uh, let me get this thing to focus. There's A in the upper one, and then volts, and then ground. And so, yeah. Let me show you guys how you can get this up and running because if you just copy and paste this code, it's not gonna it's not gonna work. There's a few things you need to do. So the first thing you need to do is you need to come up to the upper right corner and you need to come down to preferences. Then you need to go down to Raspberry Pi configuration. Then you need to go to interfaces and you need to make sure that this SPI right here, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see and focus it so it's not bright like that. Let me turn off my, there we go. Nope. You need to make sure that this SPI right here is enabled because by default it will be disabled and if you try to run this code it will give you an error. So make sure that this right here is enabled, click OK. Then the next thing you need to do is you need to make sure that this package is installed. SPI dev or some people like to call it spy dev. So the way that you get this to work is you come up to the command prompt and then It'll open up this little window, and then you're going to type in pip install SPI dev. So, that's not what I want to do. pip install SPI dev. Now, I already have it installed, but you press enter, and it's going to tell me that I have it already installed, but you're going to see a much, bunch of different stuff show up right here. Yep, see, successfully installed. So, yeah. Now, let's go ahead and run it, and I'll show you it working. So I'm gonna go down here, press F5 to run it. Press OK. The window's gonna open up, and you can see that the encoder count is zero right now. So if I go spin this, you can see that the uh, encoder count is increasing. I'm spinning this. So 
so yeah that's how you get this uh, this chip to work with your rotary encoder for the Raspberry Pi and I'm gonna go ahead and stop this so yeah there you go if you have any questions please leave them down in the comment section below please like the video and uh, subscribe and uh, have a good day